given a chance to help rebuild their lives. King Salman has ordered that they be granted visas so they can work legally. From the Saudi capital Riyadh, Mohammed Val reports. They were known by Saudi authorities as the unknown. They're mostly unemployed and wanted by immigration police. But the status of these estimated half a million illegal immigrants from Yemen is about to change. The backdrop is the extensive suffering caused by the war in Yemen. In March, a Saudi-led coalition launched a military air campaign against Houthi rebels. The operation was to restore President Abdrabu Mansour Hadi to power following a Houthi coup in January. Hundreds of civilians have died and thousands have lost their livelihoods and homes. Saudi authorities say up to 30,000 Yemenis arrive in Saudi Arabia every month. Now most of them are fleeing the war. Saudi Arabia says the legalization is a brotherly gesture towards the people of Yemen. We escaped harsh conditions in Yemen, but it's even harsher here. We have no rights or benefits at all. I've been living like this for 13 years and I feed 10 family members. I think the king's initiative will be very good for us. Ali spends some of his time helping fruit vendors like this one. When they don't need him, he wanders the street looking for work. Like Ali, this young man is trying to make a living. It's been tough here because you either have to buy a residency permit for 20,000 Saudi rials or remain in hiding as an illegal immigrant. Both Mujib and Ali say they have only one thing to worry about. It's the loved ones they left amid the conflict in Yemen. And this is the moment that every Yemeni immigrant here in Saudi Arabia works for. It is when they come here to send the hard-earned fruits of their labor to their families back home. The UN says about one million Yemenis work legally in Saudi Arabia, providing up to $1.4 billion in remittances for their families at home. This accounts for 4.2% of the GDP in a country where more than 50% of the population lives under the poverty line. The additional half million without legal papers also send remittances, even though they make less money. The king's decision is likely to boost both their economic status and a better chance of survival for their families. Mohamed Val, Al Jazeera, Riyadh. It's now 100 days since King Salman came to power in Saudi Arabia, a period that saw the kingdom lead a regional coalition attack against Houthi rebels in, in Yemen. King Salman has also made significant changes in the royal power structure. Joining me live from Riyadh is Saudi Affairs Specialist Ahmed Al Ibrahim, and we appreciate your time very much. So let's start with the reshuffling in the royal family. I realize it hasn't been that long, but are we beginning to see the effects of that? Uh, well, well, definitely. Everybody was seeing uh, this reshuffle in the government, and you know, as you just say, the first hundred days. The, if you would count, the two most important thing is going to war to Yemen and uh, put uh, the king put his son in line for the throne. Uh, I think the he pushed the government much younger. Uh, he wants to decentralize the government. He wants to listen more to the youth of Saudi Arabia, since the youth are a big percentage in Saudi Arabia. And I think by appointing these young bloods in the country, they're going to be closer to the citizen. They're going to execute a lot of things that the Saudi youth they would like to see. Uh, probably what would they in like the first hundred days, there's. I mean, you know, what, what, the, what the normal we hear, we would like to see more jobs. We would like, you know, women, they would like to see uh, more uh, freedom uh, in the, you know, making decisions, uh, disengage from the man, uh, you know, custody and all that stuff and basically become uh, more uh, coping with the first world and uh, you know they showed that they have these capabilities uh, uh, th there is more needs to Saudi Arabia that they would like to cater to the to the leaders of this country that customize our culture and the uh, the, the the heritage of the Saudis and in the first 100 days of King Salman as you know uh, you know probably there's not too mu too many uh, points or decision that he's taken but he made a decisive and very strong point so, you know one of the is uh, you know the operation the size of a uh, storm let's talk, uh, let's talk more about Yemen. that has uh, that been has that been a successful operation on the part of the Saudis 
Well, uh, we, we cannot claim it's 100% success. Yes, we, we the government did succeed in hitting the target from air. Now, the, the, the toughest part is coming right now, which is the restoring hope, Operation Restoring Hope. Uh, as, we, as you can see, in the past couple of days, we had a couple uh, conflicts on the border. Uh, you need, you, Saudi Arabia needs a lot of help in understanding how they could exit Yemen very right and how they can also, which is a big issue, uh, putting a humanitarian uh, food, medical supply into Yemen. Saudi Arabia does not have experience per se in, 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 in let's say, helping another country to restore their, their country together. Uh, we know the United States uh, of America in Iraq and Afghanistan, they had a huge problem exiting and that actually came back to their land. So in Saudi Arabia, we would, uh, the government, they are working day to day in order to figure out what is the best solution. It's by putting more money into the tribes in Yemen to, you know, to contain themselves, to yes, put sir. themselves back into the government or, or, or they're going to be going on to our ground uh, forces. Yes, as they say, it's always easy to, to start a conflict, not always easy to wrap it up. Uh, Ahmed Alibrahim, Saudi Affairs Specialist, thank you very much. A